In this video, guys, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of trading a breakout strategy. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so breakout strategies, fundamental stuff you see in many, many trading textbooks. And we know the score, you know what a breakout strategy is, guys. It's literally breaking, let's talk about a bull from a bull perspective, breaking through a high, you buy a new high. So you end up, it's a bit chasing, but you buy the new high. And the expectation is that the market will continue on and on and on. Now, that, as with all strategies, you know this, I know this, there's pros and cons to it. So let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of trading a pure breakout strategy. So let's talk about the good things first. The good thing is if you get on the end of a big move, you are really going to make your month, your quarter, your year, your day, depending on what time frame you're trading. Breakout strategies, when they work, are for the most risk reward. Now, the key is when they work, we'll talk about that in a second. But the point is, is that if you have the right conditions, if you have everything lining up and you get a breakout strategy, it's a perfect storm. Why? Because generally speaking, the breakout is happening because other time frame money, bigger money is moving into or out of the market, depending on what you're trading. If your currency pair might be out of one currency and into the other, you know, you get the idea. And because of that, you might have a persistent trend that comes after because there's a reprice, there's a macro event, there's something that causes the market to continue on and on and on. Now, the, by the very nature of breakout strategy, you're risking, you'll buy the breakout, you perhaps have a stop under the breakout, it's reasonably tight, but you're looking for three, four, five, ten times your money back on it because, which we'll come to in a minute, they don't always work as often as you'd like, but the payoff when they work is huge. The other positive is really a mindset thing, is that when they work, they often work straight away. So that means that you're in the trade, you buy the, buy the market, and it goes in your favor. You don't have to sit through much heat. Now sure, some will retrace, some will kind of uh, mess around and kind of hover near your stop before they finally go, but the cleanest, most aggressive breakouts real literally run you'd have no heat if you like to be able to bring your stop up you can bring your stop up pretty quickly if you like to scale out the position it gives you the opportunity so it's really um, enticing uh, from that perspective and the other way that a breakout kind of seduces you a little bit which is probably sits in the middle of the pro and con is that it's an easy trade to take you know we've all been there the market's running on it's got some momentum it's about to break through highs it feels like an easy trade to take because you take it it breaks through often gives you profits pretty quickly as well like we said because of the momentum uh, kind of breaking through liquidity all this kind of stuff and stops being triggered on the other side you're on the right side of it bang 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 immediately you're in profit it's quite nice from that perspective um now whether that's a good thing or a bad thing like i said i think it fits somewhere in the middle being an easy trade so those are the good things as when it goes your way many times your return um you don't have to take too much heat quite easy to identify on the chart as well so that they work nicely now, the, the, the cons the downside of trading a breakout is that they don't often happen you know, the reality is, guys, the markets will be you know, chugging, they'll be backfilling, they'll be consolidating. You only have to look at your favorite currency pair, your favorite indices, slightly different indices at the moment uh, when we're in trending environments, but you have to look at all the markets combined. And you can see that very often we have those wicks and tails, we talk about the candle formations, and that's breakouts that just literally run a little bit and then reverse. And that could be frustrating if you're purely trading breakouts and you're in the wrong environment, you want to get stopped, 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 Stop, stop. Now, it doesn't mean to say it's not a profitable strategy over time because you can get stopped out four or five times, then get a 10x runner. Great, that undoes all that, loses, and gives you five times your money. Perfect. If you can do that and you can sit through, this is an extra thing really is the, the mindset of losing, 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 waiting for that big winner, then that's fine. The other thing with breakouts, guys, is that uh, very often they will they will kind of lure you into a false sense of security because you could go through a period of time where the market's breaking out, you're buying breakouts, buying breakouts, 1999, perfect example, the bull market, uh, tech stock, people just bought the strongest stock as it went to new highs, it would do another 5%, another 10%, 
and they were being rewarded for buying breakouts. It was the perfect strategy for that time, no doubt about it. If you trade a mean reversion, you're out of the game. You know, it was literally momentum, bang, bang, bang. And so we often have, we've not had uh, as, as aggressive as that recently, but we have different times when breakouts are working well. I can think of maybe crypto would be a great example. When Bitcoin was running to highs, breakout strategy was the only strategy you needed. And you could write on your bit of paper, I trade breakouts, this is my way I trade them, and you'd be a genius for a year. The trouble is it lures you into a false sense of security because normally over a decent period of time, you're not gonna, they're not going to be working. And so you have to either make them work aggressively for you and then know when they're not working, i.e. know when they're faking out, know when you shouldn't be pressing the throttle down, know when the conditions are not quite right for the breakout. And the final thing is, is the, I kind of touched on it a moment ago, but I think this is the key one, guys, because it's a mental game. It's not necessarily an operational game of what strategy is the best because, you know, they've all got their place for the right market environment, the right conditions, the right underlying asset. But the mental game of breakouts, the issue you have is if you're constantly buying a breakout, you're getting stopped. You're constantly buying a breakout and get stopped. How many times do you buy the breakout on one specific, um, let's say event, so multiple breakouts within one level, if you like, how many times do you have a go at that before you give up? Because you're almost overcommitted. Let's say you take it twice. You buy the breakout, doesn't go, doesn't go, stopped out. Now, now you're in a, in a funny scenario. You're in a different position than you were when you took the initial breakout because now you're really, really committed. You're really committed because if you don't take it, you're gonna feel frustrated because it took two and it went on the third. Whereas in the first breakout, if you missed it, you're not that bothered. You're like, oh, I didn't take it, so what? The third breakout, if it works, then great. If it doesn't, uh, you're gonna get stopped again. Do you take the fourth? Now, if you don't take the fourth or subsequent, whatever number it may be, you have that in your mind saying, if I don't take it, I've already committed. I'm already pop committed. I've lost X on this, X on this, X on these three goes. It's now the fourth go. I need to commit. I've already spent money trying to commit to it. So it becomes harder to not commit to it because of the consequences mentally of it not working. And so you're in a tricky position. So that's my big issue with breakouts. I think they're great. They're part of my trading strategy under the right conditions and they're fantastic guys. When they work, they're beautiful trades for all the reasons we talked about earlier. But that big issue has got to be considered. You've got to consider the mental um, hardship, for want of a better word, of being stopped, of being stopped, of being stopped, and then how will you react? Will you take it again? Will you not take it again? If you don't take it again and it runs, will that really ignite FOMO when you're like, I knew it was gonna go, oh, I'm gonna hit it now, and you go long, and you chase it, all those kind of bad things, then it retraces, and you end up, you know the score. We've all been there to some degree or another. So, I think if you're going to take breakouts, have a plan, I'm taking two breakouts, and I won't take any more, I'll look for something else, or whatever your plan may be. I take one, I take four, however it may be. The point is, guys, be aware that as seductive as they are, and as how powerful they can be, there's a dark side to them, and that is that they can be the, the one thing that causes you to lose discipline, it can cause you to trade on tilt, all those other things that we don't want to have as traders. So those are the pros and cons of breakouts, guys. If you like this kind of stuff, thumbs up is appreciated uh, as, uh, as always. And of course, if you've got comments, uh, stick them in the comments section below. I was interested to hear what you guys have got to say about what is probably uh, the most famous trading strategy out there. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.